welcome back to the Lucid Dreaming Podcast. Uh, it's been a while since I recorded, uh, probably the last time was around December, and I apologize for disappearing for so long. As usual, life just uh, does whatever it wants, and uh, we're tagging along for the ride, it seems. But I, um, I took this opportunity to uh, record an episode and do an interview, which is hopefully another in a series of interviews that are going to be the the next upcoming episodes and hopefully I'll get to a chance to do more of these. I know I've been getting a lot of emails of like, "Hey, did you stop recording the podcast? Are you going to do more?" which is uh is kind of awesome to to hear people um really enjoying the podcast and wanting more episodes. So, I'm going to make a concentrated effort to get back into the habit of recording and um and hopefully interviews would help um you know, I don't have to sort of come up with everything uh, on my own and it's a conversation. It's much uh, easier and more interesting in bringing some of uh, the people and ex- experts to talk about lucid dreaming and everything around it. So um, I've reached out to a few people already. There's a few more people who I want to reach out to and uh, and see if I can bring on the podcast. So stay tuned for that. And so for today's interview, for today's episode, um, I recorded an awesome conversation with Finite Films. Uh, three guys who created the short film and then web series called Anamnesis. It's a web series about lucid dreaming and uh, many other things. It is absolutely phenomenal. It is really well made. It is beautiful. If you haven't seen it, it's a must. Um, and uh, I'll do details, the links and everything, uh, both on the show notes. I'll put it in. And at the end of the conversation, we mentioned where to go to watch it. Um, so really don't miss it. It's fantastic. I said it in the interview as well, but I'll say it again. Go watch it before you listen to this episode because there has plenty of spoilers and um, it's just, you, you know, there's better context for everything we, we discuss. So if you're not sure where to go, um, it's anamnesis-series.com. Anamnesis is spelled A-N-A-M-N-E-S-I-S dash series.com it's probably easier to go to finite films so it's finite dash films.com and you can find it from there and watch it first and then come listen to it is my recommendation you don't have to of course but uh it's probably a best listening experience that way we do go and get into some geeky stuff it's the movie lover in me that can't help uh talk technical and in uh, talk filmography and so on but there's plenty about lucid dreaming and just these uh, aspects and uh, these great guys and uh, how they made the film. So uh, one little note before we get started. Unfortunately, my mic was on the wrong settings and uh, my voice is uh, sounds a little far and distinct and um, it's not too bad, I hope, uh, but at least I think it recorded um, the guys with with better audio. So uh, unfortunately, this is not like perfect audio, which uh, drives me absolutely crazy. But hopefully, it's also not too bad, and you can listen to it and and still enjoy the uh, the conversation. So uh, let's get to it. Thank you guys for 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 coming uh, to to do this little uh, chat. Um, I have the trio of the Finite Films uh, production, mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, I'm gonna let you introduce yourselves. As someone whose name has been butchered many a times, I'm just I never, <laughs> take, I never take chances with these things. So, um. <clears throat> uh, yeah, my name is Alex Cayetos, uh, and I'm one of the three co-founders of Finite Films, and I uh, co-directed, co-wrote Anamnesis. My name is Michael Tucker. I'm also one of the co-founders, and also co-wrote and co-directed Anamnesis. Uh, my name is Ryan McDuffie. I was producer on Anamnesis, the web series and short film. <laughs> yes, yeah, so uh, so uh, I'm, I'm just going to put some things out there. First of all, to avoid having to avoid spoilers, I'm just going to say spoilers. I'm going to probably borrow the spoiler horn from the uh, Incomparable podcast. <laughs> they always, uh, you know, ahead of time, warning people. So if, if people listening haven't seen the short film and web series Anamnesis, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so... Stop listening. Go watch it. It's not. It's not that long, and it's awesome. And uh, and then come back and listen, and it'll make more sense. And uh, we'll, <laughs> we won't ruin anything for you. Um, so, and the other thing I wanted to say, and I'm going to apologize for listeners 
uh, this is probably going to be as much about lucid dreaming as it is about me geeking over filmmaking. <laughs> this is one of my, <laughs> my, the things that I enjoy as well. So awesome. So let, uh, so, so be it. So, um, you know, you, you guys created uh, a short film a while back and, and then created the web series. You kickstarted it. We love Kickstarter on this podcast <laughs> uh, and in general. Um, and if, if it's my impression, first of all, that the, the, both of them, uh, probably the short film more than the, the, the web series, but, but both just as much, I think is as much about death and dare I say spirituality as it is about lucid dreaming. Um, what was the, the general impetus? Uh, what what you, what made you guys uh, make the the series or, or choose the, these topics? Um, I also should mention that I watched the web series before I watched the the short film, mm. which was kind of a memento kind of thing for oh, me. So yeah. Yeah. Watching it in some, <laughs> some aspect kind of backwards. So so give me just a, a brief overview of that, if you will. Um, so the short film uh, it was made. Uh, back in 2012 and it was part of this kind of year-long experiment we did when we kind of launched our film company um, to basically try to challenge ourselves to release a short film every month for a year. Um, crazy and amazing. Yeah, <laughs> it's really crazy. Uh, and they're kind of staggered so we have like a three-month period to actually make each of them but we staggered it between the three of us so we always have one coming out every month that was oh, you know, wow. being finished. Um, part of the impetus and kind of you know, kick in the butt we needed to like do that was trying to figure out how could we um, have an audience that was expecting content from us, you know, that was waiting for it month after month. And how could we kind of inspire ourselves to just write something and just do it and not kind of overthink it. So we came up with this system of constraints where basically we had an online uh, submission form where people could submit like one sentence constraints to us. Mm -hmm. So some of them in anamnesis were like, um, uh, there has to be a, like a, two minute long single take in the short film and so there's a scene in Animes of the short film where there's no cuts for two minutes as they kind of run through this office building that explains something <laughs> I wanted to ask about yeah. that because that was freaking remarkable <laughs> that thing, and I was like oh. awesome. I wasn't even sure if there was a cut when he goes into the stairwell like I was yeah. like, for a second mm -hmm. I thought but zero was cuts like, yeah. that was amazing that was <laughs> spectacular spectacular so that's, and that's thanks to Michael he was actually on camera he, he did he shot that whole thing. Yeah. Um, well, there's a lot of like r amazing camera work. Of for Again, I'm going to just mm -hmm. like go all over the place here, but uh, yeah. just go with me. Um, <laughs> a lot of amazing camera work in the short film and even in the, the only other one I've watched other than the short and the web series is the time travel one mm -hmm. uh, from those. Stealing time. Which again, if there's anything I love just as much probably as Lucid Dreaming is time travel. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Um, West too. Just yeah. amazing really to just run, run and gun kind of mm -hmm. camera work. So. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, kind of circling back to your first question, uh, that's just, that's why the first short film was made. Um, cool. and I think there's enough stuff in those constraints that got me thinking about just, you know, what's like an ambitious story I want to tell that could kind of do things cinematically I hadn't had the chance to experiment with before. Um, and I really wanted to have it take place in like a dream world in some kind of dream situation where we could do fun things that I couldn't do in a hard, real, you know. Yeah. Real life movie. I remember jumping from <clears throat> location to location specifically. Yeah, I would. About, yeah. I like that, mm -hmm. and then just be able to have kind of try to get across the the dream signs or the kind of those dream feelings where you see like almost a symbolic form in a dream that kind of represents something, but not literally. Anyway, so I, I've been wanting to do all those things in movies for a while, um, and I thought instead of just having it be just any old dream, how about it? It's the the dream you supposedly have when you're dying, which is it's kind of like a re rewind of your life. Right. Um, and so, yeah, so the thought was basically well, the story would be a journey from Adam, the main character kind of almost being in denial that he's dying or not really knowing that he's dying to accepting his death by the end of the story. Right. Um, as and, well as his true nature. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, what I was going to ask, when yeah. I was thinking about that aspect in which he keeps telling him in the, in the short film, mm -hmm. um, very reminiscent. It's funny that before we started this, we, we were talking about Integral Institute and, uh, and Ken Wilber. Mm -hmm. For me, it has to do a lot with both philosophy, nature of reality, and spirituality. Mm -hmm. um, and it reminded me, because I didn't know how, how you were going to ask it, the, the question about like death and is it about spirituality. It reminded me of an Integral Institute interview 
uh, where Stuart Davis was interviewing Darren Aronofsky about The Fountain. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. <laughs> and it seemed like The Fountain, which I love this movie, um, he created this film almost subconsciously about the subject. Because when he was talking to him, he wasn't really saying, oh, this was purposefully about spirituality or something. But every point in that film was touching about death and beyond death and mm-hmm. you know, immortality and all that kind of stuff. So. Yeah, I, would, I mean, The Fountain was a huge inspiration to me. And I honestly don't think I would have made Animesis what it was if not for the fountain like i think that really that movie i think touched on death and those kind of spiritual themes in a way i've never seen Absolutely. any other movie do <laughs> in a way that i just felt to my core makes perfect sense to me <clears throat> yeah so and um and i would say that uh it's funny because the the name anamnesis which everybody's like what the hell's that word where that come from <laughs> um i think it came from like a essay by ken wilber or something just because he was using it in the context of um almost the idea of like you know, uh, the universe, like, remembering what it actually is. Right. You know, the spiritual experience being that, essentially. And yeah. so, and and death is kind of the ultimate uh, moment where that can happen, right. in a way, because your literal ego, your life is going away. So it's like, what am I if not this? So, yeah, so I think all those things, all the things I'd read, the found and all that stuff, all yeah. came together into this one film. And then it was kind of like, after I made that movie, I was like, I don't know what to do next. Because that was like all the things I wanted to do. So I was kind of in a weird like depression after that of like, yeah, like that, I got to put it all into one movie, but now what? That's, that's fascinating because, uh, you yeah. know, again, uh, the whole thing about who you really are, and that's the essence of, you know, enlightenment or spiritual awakening or something that happens in death. There's, it seems to be a lot of parallel in, in, the, in both the short and the web series about sort of the bardos. The area between people saying, even in um, Ken Wilber's uh, um, Cosmic Consciousness, he says that lucid dreaming is the practice of the same sort of realm that you know Buddhism talks about as the bardos. The area, be, you know, between sort of life and death, or mm. um, if there is reincarnation between incarnations, it's like the bardos and having a lucid dreaming practice, which is why uh, um, the Buddhist, the Tibetan yoga of dream and sleep is practicing lucid dreaming. It's because to practice for the bardos and death hmm. and be prepared for that. So it kind of ties in uh, amazingly. Mm. So that's that's cool. really cool. That's that's fascinating. Um, so I I wanted to let's see. There's I just so many things <laughs> I wanted to to touch upon, uh, and I wanted to say like in person. I'm glad that we got to sort of do this uh, together. The, the web series is so well made. I mean, it's, it's, it's gorgeous. It's spectacular. The, 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 the audio, the, the soundtrack is amazing. The shots are amazing. Just, um, you know, cinema-wise, it's really, really well made. I think if anybody is listening and hasn't watched it yet, it's just such a must uh, for me as a, as a sort of semi-film geek. How long did it take to create it? Like, what was the... Because uh, you started the Kickstarter in, like, uh, 13, 2013? <laughs> yeah. It's been, it's been a windy journey. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think, so we started uh, writing it in August of 2012, right? Or like September or something. Yeah, yeah. Fall of 2012. Yeah, so mm-hmm. fall of 2012. And then, yeah, we did the Kickstarter sort of at the end of 2012, moving into 2013. And then we shot it uh, kind of February through April of 2013. And then spent a couple months doing post and like finishing it all up. And then due to a number of circumstances, we weren't able to release it online until this year that we can get into or not get into. It's a long story. But basically, I think from like conception to finishing the actual episodes took about 10 months-ish, I think. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, with like three or four months of shooting, something like that. It was like 34 days of shooting (laughs) it was way too big for a web series but we tend to get really ambitious so and and so why since the length of it is is over an hour uh collectively why a web series and not a a feature film you know it's like did you shoot it in sequence for example like each episode mm -mm. no yeah we we we, we basically we honestly treated it like a feature yeah Um, yeah yeah, and and really the reason it's a web series is because you know and the reason it's based on anamnesis and everything that it is is because um a producer, uh, a guy who runs this website called Film Skillet, Jeremy Norris, he came to us because he saw the short film online and he he wanted to uh, produce an original web series and he was like, hey, why don't we base it off of this? Oh, 
cool. Which was a challenge because then it was like, how do you base a web series <laughs> off of a very self-contained story about yeah. death and the main character dying at the end? Yeah. <laughs> so that's it. Was a really it took some time to figure that it was out. A, it yeah. was a really interesting starting place. But you've, you've yeah. done that's. I mean, you've managed to somehow make it work, and that was what was fascinating <laughs> to me about watching the web series first and then watching the short film. That mm-hmm. it, it connected perfectly. Yeah, that's cool to hear. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's great. Um, I guess uh, uh, here is where where my, my my ploy to bring you in here and, and lock you in. So I, <laughs> I, you know, you leave a lot of questions open in it, but in my opinion, maybe way too much. And that <laughs> I mean, I'm all for the let the audience interpret it, but I think the the part was missing for me was the the third person, you know, dying in the store in the copy shop, and um, you know, the Vera connection and her nightmares and so on. So. I don't know. Some something missing. Are you gonna yeah. Are you gonna make more? I know a, people, a lot of people ask you this, and it depends. So I wanted to see what it depends on what. <laughs> yeah. Well, we like we wrote it knowing that we wanted to make more, and okay. it was like we're gonna do these first five episodes to like start the story going and kind of hook people, and we're sort of treating it almost as like a big pilot in a way to just like get the story going. Yeah. Um. And so, and we we would still love to make more. Uh, and so right you're talking now, to Netflix, and <laughs> they're making a lot of shows now. That's true. I mean, yeah, it's sort of all contingent on how popular it can become, because like views and fans are sort of the thing that will influence. Like, could we do another Kickstarter to raise enough money right. Right. to make more, or reach out to some of these bigger companies and show like we have a fan base here? Like, this can be turned into something bigger. Um, so that's sort of our main focus now is getting it out there, getting as many people to see it as possible to sort of get support to hopefully be able to make more. Yeah. It used to be, you have to like win uh, festival awards and right. get and sell your, mm-hmm. your thing. Now you have to create a fan base and show that you have an audience. Right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, that's why it's, there's a lot of things left open cause it was always, we always intended to continue and yeah. Did you, did you guys manage to stay within the uh, the Kickstarter budget, or do you have to did you have to extend beyond? <clears throat> we we did, and you know that's kind of the thing that we need to figure out. You know, for this next, if we do another season, because right. essentially a Kickstarter budget was like a supplemental budget to the one we got what from Film Skillet. Right. Um, but even with those combined, it was a very small budget for what we actually made. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and and you know a lot of people were volunteering. You know, people got paid almost nothing to work on it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was like food was the, you know, commodity. And and just and honestly just, you know, that's not sustainable. You know, if we want to make more seasons of this, you know, people need to get paid if they're working for weeks and weeks on yeah, a big sure. project. Mm-hmm. So yeah, we just we would love to actually raise, you know, the amount of money we need to raise to make a feature film, an indie feature film, which is a lot more than the fifteen thousand we raised <laughs> last time on Kickstarter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um and so yeah, so that that really is just dependent on if we can get enough fans that collectively they could sponsor that or if we could find a partner that wanted mm-hmm. to you know at least partially fund it um you know one one place i think it could live that would be i would be really excited about would be vimeo um because you know Vime- so. vimeo is just kind of tiptoeing now into the original programming yeah. world mm-hmm. um and you know high maintenance was a show that they they kind of took on as an original programming show and hbo just picked it up wow um, it's a comedy, but if they wanted to go into the sci-fi drama realm, it, we feel like the you know the Vimeo crowd seems to really appreciate the things that you liked about the show, which is you know cinematography, really good production values, the filmmaker, the cast yeah. is amazing, <laughs> it's everything. It's spectacular. Yeah, so because we lo- we'd love to keep making it ourselves, like as a web series, mm-hmm. you know, you know part of part of the challenge of the show is like it's not like a there's been a lot of successes like Girls or Broad City that that went from this web format into like, you know, HBO or something. But those were all kind of like sketch comedies that are kind of easily continuable into another format. Right. But, you know, we've kind of made this almost trying to already be like an HBO show. So (laughs) we we don't really want to have to like start from scratch and like remake it with everything different. Right. So yeah, if we can somehow keep making it ourselves, but be financially sustainable. That's our dream. Right. I, so, think, I think it makes me yeah. think of, uh, of shows like Awake. Have you guys seen Awake? It was, we watched, we watched the pilot. Yeah. yeah. There was one, one season and it got canceled and it was just so, such an intriguing concept. Of, yeah. You know? mm-hmm. and, and that's, I think it's one of the things I love about uh, the web series is that it, in films in general, Inception, all those, 
um, anything that plays around with your sense of what's real and what's reality and, and so mm-hmm. on. Uh, so I want to get into that because and, and into the whole lucid dreaming thing. And as far as I can tell, maybe I'm, I'm kind of like projecting onto the film <laughs> some stuff, but you even, even if not saying it per se, but, but implying there's like aspects of like, there's dream signs, there are even recurring dreams, discontinuity, reality checks, dream incubation with the uh, thing, even out of body experience kind of, uh, kind of <laughs> implied, uh, dream sharing, um, Maybe with the with the exception of false awakening, you you kind of covered the mm. spectrum. Am I right? Mm-hmm. So did you did you go out and do research about this? Did you have just enough of experience of your own? I'm going to ask you about your own <laughs> yeah. experience soon. Um, what 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 did what did it take to kind of learn about this this arena more? I mean, it was definitely uh, we definitely did research once we sort of you know pinpointed that this was going to be sort of how we transitioned from the short film into like a web series. Cause I think that was one of the things that we basically the, uh, the main thing that made it all click for us was, you know, at the end of the short film, Adam dies, but then we were like, well, what if the web series picks up where Hannah, his girlfriend wakes up and it's not that she was just a fictional character in his dream right. or representation. What if she actually experienced it with him and she was a real character. And so that sort of, I think, led us into the lucid dreaming notion. And then it was pretty much your friend, Gary, had yeah, a lot uh, of experience with One him. of my longtime friends, um, Gary Rees, he, um, he has been lucid dreaming, I, I don't know since, since when, for, for years and years and years. And, he, and for a period in his life, he like really practiced it seriously. Um, so I did this like long interview with him. I took recorded it on my iPhone and just asked him to just like tell me everything about his like practice, about his experiences. So a lot of the content in the show came out of that interview. Um, we also had an author from the UK named Daniel Love reach out to us during yeah. our Kickstarter campaign. Um, and he just written a book called Are You Dreaming? Um, and so he kind of reviewed our scripts uh, for us and kind of mm-hmm. let us know if we were portraying things inaccurately or could, you know, could do it a little bit more to his experiences. Um, and then, uh, also we did have a couple, uh, lucid dreams we can get into, but I think <laughs> just, just researching and studying it and thinking about it so much yeah. started to trigger them for me. Yeah. For a lot yeah. of people, just uh, even reading about lucid dreaming for the first time kind of triggers it. And if you immerse yourself in the subject, it often triggers it, which is honestly really why I started this podcast to try to <laughs> kind of get back into, you know, Talking about it, learning about it, and then so on. Mm-hmm. So, what's what? What was your first lucid dream ever, each of you? Yeah. <laughs> Have you had a lucid dream? I yet? think I think when we first started working on it, I was really excited about getting into it, but wasn't too successful at it. And we were working on it and all that. But I know I had one where it was just that. I'm sure like everyone's first one is like, oh my God, I'm in a dream. And then you're awake yeah. and that's it. And then not successful then. Send. But since actually we've released it um, and I've been like looking at the different websites, all the lucid dreaming community, I've been getting into it again. So I've been hitting it hard and trying to do it, but have yet to be successful. It's, it's tough. I yeah. Understand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The one that I had that I can like really be like, oh, I was like lucid for sure was like, when we were in the midst of making it and so it was like you know the script every day and talking about it it was like constantly there uh and i remember being in my dream and i was in like this cafeteria like my high school cafeteria but it like also wasn't in that dream way um but i remembered the um the reality test that hannah does in the show where she like plugs her nose and then breathes in and I remember doing that, being like, oh, I'll just check and see if I can do it. And then it happened, and I like my brain exploded, and I was like, oh, my God, I'm dreaming. And I immediately like did a cool like slow backflip into the air and then started flying. And I was like, this is amazing. And then I woke up in the air. <laughs> the excitement is hard to contain. It's, it's hard. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah. I still get that. <laughs> yeah, but yours was the most like detailed. Well, my, mine really was striking because um, I... I mean, I, I probably had some other lucid dreams before that were, you know, dream induced. Um, but, but the one that I really remembered was uh, you call it like a wild, right? Wake induced yeah. lucid dream. <laughs> yeah. um, it, you know, it was is the technique I've heard it before, which is like you try to wake up kind of earlier than normal, so you're still sleepy, and then try to go back to sleep with yeah. kind of awareness. That happened by accident, where I just happened to wake up at like 5 a.m. for no reason. So I was going back to sleep, um, and as I was falling asleep. 
I, you know, I was, I've been thinking about all these things and I was like, wait a minute, I'm like staying conscious right now, even though I'm doing the sleep paralysis and getting heavy, <laughs> like, cool. This is like, okay, I'm doing it. And it, it was like, it was really striking when I actually kind of passed into the dream world. It was kind of an out of body experience because I literally felt like my body launched off my bed, <laughs> but it was like kind of frozen in my sleep position, <laughs> but I just like launched off my bed. It was still within my bedroom. It seemed like, and I kind of like passed through a portal in my ceiling and ended up in my childhood backyard, just kind of floating above the pool in my parents' backyard in Arizona. Um, and it was just it was just really crazy because I didn't really have control in a way. I was kind of being taken on a ride. Yeah. But I ended up like diving into the pool and I could breathe and it was great. And I looked up <laughs> at the surface and there was like a awesome like red Arizona dust storm with like rain falling on the surface. And it was like the most vivid IMAX, like, you know, I think, I think in film terms, yeah. like vivid IMAX, like beautiful, impossible color experience I'd ever had. And, and then I woke up cause it was so cool. Yeah. But, um, but that really got me like hooked. I was like, that was like, that was an experience. That's not just like, yeah, the, the, I saw things that I had never seen before. So fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, so are, are you are you guys to trying to practice on some kind of a regular basis or something, trying to get into it, or is life too busy? And busy <laughs> and nobody sleeps well. And I'm busy. so excited about the prospect of it that I'm trying to uh, <laughs> okay. read books. I was asking about the books you had. I'm, I'm pushing my finger through my hand throughout the day. <laughs> That's good. Um, That's good. Yeah, so we'll see. I'll I'm, I'll give you the tip I give to everybody. I think the the kind of basis for being able to lucid dream for the vast majority of people is having good dream recall which means writing your dreams yeah i have been doing that for about a month now Mm -hmm. that's good and and seeing like the patterns like oh yeah this happens or this this emotional there's an emotional pattern in it i really found so uh, that's sort of trying to i'm trying to make that my trigger okay very cool that's good that's good yeah, we, we haven't been as good. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm so bad at because I, I wake up sometimes from a dream and I'm like, I've got to write this down. But I'm like so tired and like, oh, this dream journal isn't like handy. Oh, yeah. no, back to sleep. But I got I to make it easy for myself and just have it yeah. right there. I've been trying to do it with my phone. It's just that like, then I go back and read it and it's like, I've spelled everything so wrong. And like, <laughs> I tried to like audio record myself yeah. one night and I listened to it again recently and I was like, I've sound completely insane I guess <laughs> I have, those aren't words that I'm like I have no idea what I'm talking about so, yeah. it's really cool going back and reading them actually because I don't I realize when I write it down I don't even remember it when I finish writing it down just sort of yeah. in that mm-hmm. like you forgetting away so I went back and read it I'm like what was this dream I had that's like written in pretty good detail because yeah. you're still in a different state and yeah, you're yeah. yeah. It's what's so, memory is yeah. I like dream my cat was running into a cave and I had to go rescue him <laughs> And I was like, what? I don't remember that I'm even writing that down in the morning. <laughs> that's, that's funny. That's awesome. But yeah, it's uh, it's tricky, and I think that's why uh, I have a, a theory that even just talking to someone, so your significant other or something, tell somebody your dream, even tell your phone your dream, <laughs> yeah. you know, and, and just get into the habit of keeping it in top of mind. Because mm-hmm, then, you mm-hmm. know, if you don't do it, Ten minutes later, you're like, well, that's not right. So maybe read it, it again that day, kind of thing. Well, or, that's yeah. interesting. Yeah, I know that at the very least, I love writing it because then I can go back and search for dream signs. Mm-hmm. Like if there's mm-hmm. something that's, you know, occurring again and again in a dream, and it's something that you can also um, trigger a, a a reality check in real life. So if you see something repeatedly, or you see a place repeatedly, or a person repeatedly in your dreams. Then you then you know that you reliably can see them again or see it again in your dream. So when you're doing reality checks, don't do just random ones throughout the day, which is good. You can do those anyway. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But when you see that thing, do a reality check. Then it, you'll get into the habit of when you see the, it in the dream, do a reality test and hopefully trigger the. Yeah. yeah, 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 makes sense. Um, cool. So uh, uh, the name of finite films I wanted I'm just, just curious <laughs> the is there a story behind the behind the name uh I mean we came up with it during an aim group buddy chat um <laughs> and I think it was just, we the, the whole constraints idea uh came from you know before we started the company uh was it you were writing something you you, you wanted to make a film and just kind of needed 
like I said earlier, like kind of a kick in the butt just to do it. Right. So you, yeah. you sent me a list of like, here's some constraints, write something, and I'll make it this weekend. Right. And it and it worked. It was like, it really got me, my juices flowing to have just like, here are some rules you have to follow, write something. Mm-hmm. It, it makes it a lot easier than just like a blank page starting from nothing. Right. So, yeah. you, so yeah. you do 12 uh, short films, work, they all had constraints, yeah. you, right? It's right. Into the system. Yeah. yeah, and so it was sort of that process and then use that me constraints and we were like, oh, this is like a cool, like having these constraints forces this creativity. And so then when, you know, I finally moved to LA and joined them, we were like, we want to do something. Why don't we make a website where other people can submit constraints, they can choose their favorites and then we turn those into a movie. And so from that idea, when sort of talking about, well, what is the name? What like kind of embodies oh. that? It was sort of from finite constraints come infinite possibilities was the general tagline that we... Yeah. Which past, though, of the actual constraint-based filmmaking we found can apply to just filmmaking inherently. It's always filmmaking is just the constraints of reality. You're pushing this idea right. against. Well, um I looked up for that too. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I, I listen to uh, Kevin Smith's podcasts a lot, um, uh, especially back then. And every time he's working on a film, he's you know, and, and some people love him as an example for a filmmaker, and some don't. I think he's awesome. Um, but he, you know, he talks about how constraints always push his ability to make a film. Um, often enough, the constraint is main, mainly funding or money yeah. that mm-hmm. constrains other things, whether it's equipment, time, locations, and so on. So I, it's, yeah. it's interesting to see that that's like a, a regular thing that happens yeah. to everybody. Which and always, people make yeah. the best of it. So mm-hmm. it's, kind of, it's kind of also, it is appropriate for our company to have a name <laughs> to reflect that because we've been doing that from day one. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Trying to work with what we got. It's yeah. what sparks creativity, which is yeah. great. Yeah. So everyone always says, yeah. Sort of the opposite of what we call the George Lucas effect now. <laughs> like, <laughs> yep. when looking at the Star Wars prequels, like, when analyzing it, we're like, there's, there's, he's working with people, no one's going to tell him no, and he has as much money as he wants to do whatever he wants. Right. And so when you're actually allowed to do that, like, the results usually aren't very good. So it's like... You get Jar Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so constraints are good. Good. That's yeah. that's fascinating. So what what's next? Like, what's the next project or projects? Um, I mean, we have lots of things that we're planning. Like, obviously, we're still promoting anamnesis, and would like to do more anamnesis if that ends up making sense. Um, is, is there the equivalent of a film festival for web series? It's they're just kind of starting to come online. Uh, there's one just this year. I think the Austin Film Festival is going to have specifically a web series. Uh, section yeah, and we we have uh submitted to that All so right. we also submitted to a series fest which is a new thing in um denver um and they i don't know if they're explicitly web series but if you can we kind of cut together the show into like an hour-long pilot mm-hmm. and submitted that um and they they just take basically you know tv shows that you've made as a as a legit film festival entry and i think i think right now tv's you know everybody keeps talking about it's a new golden age of TV content, and I think they're they have a legitimacy that rivals movies now. You know, series storytelling. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So that, and then we're working on some feature scripts. Ryan's specifically been working on one and has a first draft coming pretty mm-hmm. soon. Dark comedy, <laughs> actually, with some elements of uh, dreaming and and yeah, it's a uh, well <laughs> since I started talking. <laughs> um, it's about uh, it's. Uh, a, a timid vegan librarian who, after having an intense nightmare, uh, uh, the intense nightmare physiologically f- makes him a cannibal. <laughs> so, he, so it's that sort of extreme, like taking that that ridiculous "what if" situation. How would you actually approach it? How would you deal with it? <laughs> or if he, yeah. he if he craves human flesh but wants to be a vegan? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> could, you ju- could you justify living? Yeah. <laughs> That's basically that's awesome. the question at its core. That's yeah. fantastic. And then it was cool. You mentioned time travel because that's a longer project, longer form project. Alex is working on that we're excited about too. Is a Excellent. yeah, yeah. At some point, I would, I would love to make a, a indie feature film that kind of had the same time travel mechanics as Stealing Time. What right? And, and, and Stealing Time had a very primer 
uh, th- uh, you know, thing to it. With the, <laughs> yeah. even with the box, little box. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If people haven't watched the movie Primer, yeah. it's an amazing uh, time travel indie film. But hopefully with a few twists on it that yeah. we haven't yeah. seen yeah. as far. I still as haven't seen Primer. You haven't seen Primer? No. Oh my God, I'm so good. It's funny because Michael wrote the original draft of Stealing Time without having seen Time Crimes or Primer. <laughs> yeah. 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 impressive. Yeah. Or he's from the future and he's... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 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 well, I always, I always, uh, I always say that at least to me, it feels like there's not enough good sci-fi uh, on, on yes. movies and TVs, and there's not enough time travel for sure. <laughs> so I'm putting my vote, and if you kick started, I'll put my money behind <laughs> any time travel sci-fi thing that you guys create. Awesome. awesome. Um, We're, we are in the exact same boat. Yeah. We, just, we wish there was more of all of that, so <laughs> we'll just make it then. Well, and I feel like it's it's kind of unfortunate because I feel like time manipulation uh and sci-fi things and dream things are all like uh categories and genres that film does really well because just the film like film in itself is often compared to like a dream state where like you change locations quickly and like i don't know yeah the the cinematic time-based medium also yeah Yeah. Mm -hmm. so that's and that was one of the most fun parts about making enemies the series was just like all of the lucid dreaming, what is real, what isn't, like, lends itself to so much cinematic fun that it was just really fun yeah. figuring it, out how to tell a story. It's amazing that even with everything I sort of know about the quote-unquote the subject, you still manage to surprise me in the, in the web series. And, and, and the, the last two episodes, I'm not joking, like, I had chills. It's like, <laughs> it's... it's Ah, awesome. uh, it's so good. Like, the visceral reaction to something you're watching is fantastic. I'm like, how do they do it? And I watched it twice, and the same thing every time. In specific scenes, I'm like, Whoop. that's all we ever wanted. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's so amazing. It's, it's fantastic. So let's geek out for just like a little, a little bit about the filmography of it, or just the, the technical stuff. What'd you shoot it on, like camera? It was the Sony FS700. Okay. Um, that yeah, our DP Terrence Stewart, um, who shot most of our short films and shot the web series, um, he owns and he just is amazing and brings so much of the like look and feel oh, to so the web good. series because he's just yeah. so talented. Some of those like ocean shots when we were like looking, oh like God. reviewing them, I was like, wait, what? Like, <laughs> yeah. this, this isn't like a CG creation, like the, like the one shot that's like all the reflection yeah. of the clouds and the one. Like, oh yeah. He just went out like for the afternoon and shot stuff and it was like, what the heck? I was with him for that. I was <laughs> yeah. hanging out amazing. on the beach. <laughs> and it was so like fortuitous also, like, because we, we were at the beach location and it had been like, stormy in just the right way so the clouds were where they're in like yeah you know, the weather was actually really nice to us on the shoot it was, actually it was foggy that one I, day i just had the yeah. opposite thought because that reminded me of umbrellas blowing over and running outside and it raining and having to bring in lights <laughs> from outside and putting them back outside <laughs> that whole day that ended with that beautiful sunset that's that image was a pretty difficult it's shooting true. day, actually. The, the weather gods give and take. Yeah, yeah. 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 it was nice that the gave as well as took. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. Sometimes instance. they just take. And balance yeah. is restored yeah. to the universe. Yeah. 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 Um, so how how did you do some of the sort of special effects? I don't know if there was any kind of CGI, but there are some scenes where you know Noah's looking at his finger, and it's it's so well done because it's such so quick. Exactly in such a way where in a dream you're not quite sure that you saw what you saw. And that effect of him looking, and you're basically looking at him doing this, it's like, wait, did I just see what I saw? I, 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 the second time I rewinded just to see how quick that was. It's perfect. Yeah. So, how'd you do that one where the, the one at the beach where the camera is, you know, watching Noah and it's turning around and it's turning back, and then both of them are in the beach with him? Yeah, that one's, that one's like a practical one. I think they were just hiding behind a rock. I know. I was, yeah. No, yeah. I was going to say, I, that one I knew was coming and I thought they're hiding behind the camera and then they're going to stop and it's mm-hmm. going to continue turning. But they were so far. I'm like, wait, no, that's not how it was. And there's also, there's also one where, because uh, in the, at the beginning of the next episode, episode five, we spin around uh, Zach who plays Sean and uh, Mallory, who plays uh, Hannah, disappears as we circle yeah, around him. Yeah. That was That's literally right. her doing the fastest squat ever. <laughs> oh, no. Like, literally just in the just millisecond right that we're passing. Right after her line, super awkward. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so a lot of that was, like, just those actors being really quick and, and playing it off where they hadn't just... Yeah. But there were complicated frame. special effects, too, Michael yeah. can yes. speak to. There were a lot Michael's of... kind of our in-house VFX <laughs> some, guy. Some, some green screen, for sure. Uh, yeah, definitely some green... I mean, there was a lot of, yeah, After Effects work that we did. Like, anything from, like, the Noah thing, which is, like, a special effect of just, like, removing his 
finger um, to like Sean in the beginning of episode two, where he like sees the the universe and there's the moon, like it's like creating <laughs> oh, CG yeah, environments. Was, was well Thank you. And then and then there's a lot of uh, just like removing stuff or fixing shots because you know we wanted uh, like Noah's beach world to not be populated like right. it's just noah and then it's the two of them that's were they other people when you were shooting there it? were definitely other people so like them? for the most part we like tried to just like wait and like shoot around it but there were some shots like that circling around right. shot where it was impossible so like i had to go in and like paint out the people and wow. do compositing and so there's actually some pretty complicated visual effects and it's it's cool because we I finished all the visual effects like two years ago whenever we finished the right. things. So going back and watching it again, I had forgotten you all this stuff. Yourself. I, I did, which was a, a fun feeling because so much of the visual effects are supposed to be invisible. Like you're not supposed to think about it. And it's like removing things and hiding things that we didn't want to be there. So Yeah. Actually, we should mention we're working on a VFX of Anamnesis. True. Uh, that it's we're going to put together. VFX real? Yeah, well, a VFX. Yeah, what would you like, call it? Like featurette. Like, yeah, yeah feature The making of. The making of yeah, behind the scenes. We're going to package together um, a special package of the first season that we're going to have for sale on oh. amnesisseries.com. And also already um, when we were working on it, we did a few production diaries that, so you might be interested. That's awesome. Yeah, I'd love like to see all of that. Yeah. That's, that's fantastic. I love that kind of stuff. Yeah, there was some really fun ones. What uh, was the most challenging thing to, to create in that? In the film, is there a specific scene or effect or something that you were trying to do? That was... That's a good question. I think that the Sean universe shot was very difficult because it's sort of the only time where I had to create like something. Yeah, like from uh, scratch. Because well, yeah. the entire um, the entire sky is fake in that, right? Yeah, like from the even before it becomes all like spacey, right. like even the the sunrise beautifulness at the very beginning of the shot is all fake. Wow. Yeah. And it's <laughs> like... Some motion tracking, too, as I was yeah. going to say. Yeah. Noah going down the hallway into the same room he just came out of. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's great. Yeah. That is... Yeah. There's a green screen at the end of that because, you know, the hallway doesn't connect to that room. So we had to figure out... And one of our production diaries talks about it. But, like, to fake a motion control, like, dolly move, we... <laughs> Because they didn't even have the money for like actually motion control devices. Yeah, right. it was me pushing the dolly, timed by Ryan counting out the steps to the rhythm of a Kanye West song. <laughs> so, so it could be repli- replicated later. Yeah. yeah. Of course. <laughs> it's like, it's like, you know, Hudson Hawk when they're singing in order to time yeah. their uh, yeah. robberies. Yeah. Yeah. It's like sitting on the dolly and <laughs> <laughs> one, two, three. yeah. That's amazing. So yeah, we, we came up with some pretty clever ways to do stuff. It was really fun. I, yeah, yeah, I still want to know how stuff. they did the contact, the, the movie contact, where mm-hmm. she runs up the stairs into the, the mirror, mirror, and the mirror opens. It's just one oh, of those yeah. Yeah. trippy... I'll put a link in the show notes if people haven't seen just like that scene. It's is, really good. Uh, yeah, Robert Zemeckis is good at those. Mm-hmm. Oh, kind, yeah. of, kind of like not showy visual effect shots, but just like simple... That this actually is impossible to film, but mm-hmm. you just don't really think about it. Yeah, and it's effective. Like it's just impossible to be impossible. Right. The like, crash and flight. Tell the story. That was really mm-hmm. cool. Yeah. So, what was some of the the other films that were inspiring to this? I'm sure Inception was part of it. Mm-hmm. Say Fountain, definitely about the sort of essence of what the story is about. Mm-hmm. Were there any other ones that were really like either lucid dream movies? Uh, you know, there's still like, even if it's far from it, there's still like a sense of the Matrix in some little aspect. Oh, for sure, yeah. I mean, yeah. the Matrix will always like influence me for sure, just because yeah. that was like, you know, yeah. the movie of that time in my life. Yeah. Um, and I think, I mean, Lost actually inspired a lot of it because, um, you know, I think Lost had when, when did it end? Was it like 2011? Well, or well, 11 or 10. The time that it ended. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. Um, anyway, it, it basically, I feel like it, it wasn't that long before we wrote Anamnesis that mm-hmm. lost it, you know, cause now it feels really far away, but, um, but I think, yeah, we still kind of, we are almost thinking like, can we, can we pull off a lost that like is very hub- hubris of us in some ways <laughs> of like, can we, can we, can we set up crazy, it. you know, crazy stuff in the beginning of this that actually all kind of connects exactly. and comes together yeah. in the end. So Yeah. Theoretically, we have planned out arcs that do make sense of everything. Uh, 
Okay. Which seems impossible when you see the first five episodes because there's some really weird stuff that happens. Right. It, it but, feels um, incomplete in some way. You know, yeah. Like yeah. Stuff, yeah. So you but just wanted to tease up. Just like we, Lost. We were going for that that uh, really frustrating Lost feeling of like, <laughs> how the heck can this all actually come together? But, but we, we would love, say we can, we we can would love to actually pull it off and actually have it all come together. Yeah. The yeah. drug dealer method will give you a little bit and get hooked in Yeah, well, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. More? Oh, okay. Because we, we, yeah. we also love that stuff. We love... We love when we have a sense that a show or a movie like presents you with like totally unsolvable, mysterious kind of plot items, but then there actually is a plan in place right. for how they all do connect and come together. And that's always really exciting to try to attempt to do. Yeah. You know? That's cool. So I know you guys have like a day ahead of you and stuff, and I don't want to keep you guys for that much longer, but read everything you said. Um, first of all, how can people find you? Where should they look for? I know I'll put some links in the in the show notes. Uh, and how can people help in making this actually continue? And for you to, you know, support you in, in having a chance to do a continuation of the series, which is again just absolutely fantastic. <laughs> I can't get enough of this. Awesome, awesome. Well, uh, I mean, subscribe to us on YouTube. So yeah, the web series is on YouTube. Our YouTube channel is youtube.com slash finite films, all one word. We have an Anamnesis Facebook page. We have a Finite Films Facebook page. Um, yeah, there's a there's a, <clears throat> a website uh, for the series itself, just called anamnesis-series.com, cool. um, and that's where we'll be selling uh, kind of a blue, uh, not, maybe not Blu-ray, but DVD package and or like HD digital download package. Um, if you want to get special features, um, we're gonna record an audio commentary uh, for it. Yeah. Um, so and you look at putting yeah. it on uh, iTunes, for example. I know there's some indie films at least mm-hmm. that have done pretty mm-hmm. well. Yeah, I mean, I think we were thinking about using a service called um, VHX, which is kind of like an iTunes type service, and it may, I think it's actually even compatible with like AirPlay and Apple TV and stuff. Um, but it's a way that you can like self distribute and and put together a cool kind of Blu-ray style package with oh, special nice. features and stuff. Okay. Um, so yeah, we're looking into that, and and hopefully in the next few weeks we'll have that all together and yeah. available for people. And f- Finite Dash Films <clears throat> is our company website. We have a mailing list there, so any big announcement about uh, yeah, how Amnesis is looking. Great. Yeah. On there. All, all your short films are on there, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All of our work's on there. Um, and, and I think yeah, in general, basically, we just want to try to reach as many people as possible who will like the show. Um, so, I mean, if you're in a community... Uh, you're part of a forum or part of yeah, just part of any online community that you think would love Anamnesis, please share it. Please kind of keep spreading it out there because if we can get kind of a critical mass behind it who are asking for a second season, that both will allow for us to do a proper crowdfunding campaign yeah. and or prove to a distribution partner, hey, look, we already have X number of people like begging for a second season. They will watch it. Like, let's make this happen. Yeah. So that's kind of what we need to do the summer is just kind of get it out there and mm-hmm. build that fan base and for anybody listening or any of the fans like if they have ideas on how to get it out there like contact us and let us know because it's one of been one of the coolest things is like how excited the fans have been about the show and like people have reached out and now it's like been we have subtitles in like five different languages because yeah. people contacted Amazing. us and just were like I will do this for free like I just love it it needs to be in this language I will translate it for you so that kind of stuff is just amazing. So yeah, if anybody has any ideas to help us, yeah. please. Yeah, we're, we're doing it very D- DIY. So like, yeah. so we're kind of yeah. we're kind of learning as we go right now. Yeah, um, I think sure. liking yeah. the Facebook page because that's sort of where we do news updates. That's probably mm-hmm. good. Yeah, the, the Anamnesis Facebook. If you page. can follow us on social media in any way, that's great because it also helps us keep in contact with our mm-hmm. fans yeah. and kind yeah. of we can kind of rally the troops via social media if and when it comes down to like raising money for a second season. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Cool. So, if anybody's listening, I'm gonna still put all these links on the uh, in the show notes. If you're using Overcast or one of the podcast listening um, apps, or on my website lucidstage.com, and um, you know, I, I think thanks to one of my listeners was was to send me the idea to interview you. Cool. Uh, I don't know why I didn't think of it myself, but <laughs> I, I already watched you know the series by then and and loved it. So it's people like that sharing. So if you watch the short and the web series and you love it. Uh, share it, share it on social media, send it to friends, uh, spread the word, and, and help these guys out. Thank you so much for uh, for coming on the show. Thank, Thank you. you. This has been great. Thanks for having us. Awesome. <laughs> I uh, hope you enjoyed this interview and this episode. 
Uh, please check out the links uh, in the show notes. Go support these guys. It's really a phenomenal project, and I hope they continue and do more episodes. And I will continue and do my own more <laughs> additional episodes and uh, soon enough. So uh, stay tuned. If more, more good things are coming, I promise. And um, that's about it. As usual, you can always find me on Twitter at the Lucid Sage. You can email me at contact at lucidsage.com and uh, reach out with uh, ideas, suggestions, questions, concerns, complaints, jokes, and uh, just uh, 